Greetings! Today's story revolves around these lovely Asiatic lilies. The lilies had lost their blooms, but they were still very attractive green plants. Like most potted plants, my lilies were watered from the top and the excess water drained from the holes in the pots. But now I needed to leave the tall trees of the great Pacific Northwest for a 19-day trip. How then could my lilies be watered during this long absence? Maybe we could water through these holes by sub-irrigation. A shallow layer of water in a basin could move through the soil by capillary action. This homemade float valve will be used to control the water level in the basin. The float valve has an extra square of polystyrene because we want to maintain a shallow depth of water in the basin. The float valve and lilies were placed in the basin. Water flowed from a filled 5-gallon bucket to the float valve. The float valve maintained a constant 1-inch water level. I sure hope this system works and that the plants will be nice and green like this in 19 days when I come back from my trip. So I'm off on my trip. I know this may sound a little bit corny, but I'm an agriculture guy. And one of the highlights of the trip was a visit to the Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota. Corn is used to decorate the outside of this building and also in the design of these beautiful murals. But my enjoyment was dampened somewhat by the weather reports of hot and dry weather back home. And yes, I developed a wall of worry whether my lily plants were still alive. Upon returning back home, the dried up lawn was very noticeable. The grass was fried to a crisp. I'm afraid to look at my lily plants. Like it or not, I have to face the music. The lilies are green and healthy. There is water in the basin. The system works. The water level in the bucket is down by about 2 gallons. That's about 8 quarts in 19 days, which is less than a half a quart a day for the evaporation losses of the water in the basin plus the transpiration losses of the lilies. And who knows, maybe even some birds or squirrels took an occasional drink. There are many locations and situations where mosquitoes will breed in open, stagnant water. Let's try to improve this method to prevent this from happening. The basin will be filled with about 3 inches of sand, so there will no longer be any open, stagnant water. To start with, the float valve is maintaining approximately a 1 inch water level. Sand is added to fill the whole basin. The sand is about 3 inches deep. The water in the bottom of the basin is starting to moisten the sand. A small hole in the sand reveals standing water. The water level is about 1 inch deep. Drowning of the lower roots could occur if the plants sat in deeper water. Only about a gallon of water was consumed in two weeks. That's less than a third of a quart per day. Now this cannot be directly compared with the previous method because this is a different time period with different weather conditions. The pots are removed from the sand. Standing water remains in the basin. The residue on the pots should wash off when the plants are watered. There are two issues with this method. The moist, shaded sand could become a sanctuary for adult mosquitoes. And there are some mosquito species that like to lay eggs in moist soil, but they'll need standing water to complete their life cycle. So let me propose this idea. How about floating several inches of polystyrene foam on the water, but use something finer like packing peanuts? That could provide a dry surface. Well, my dear lilies, 
I'm trying really hard to find a way to keep you watered. What do you say about that? <laughs> <laughs>